Hi everyone, I'm Robin Adkins Smith and I'm a transformational coach. Today I'll be talking about how to deal with loss during the COVID-19 pandemic, including the psychological effect of not being able to have a traditional burial. Please join me. Although grief may follow many types of events, from the loss of a job, a friendship or divorce, the death of a loved one, be it a parent, child, sibling or good friend, is always devastating and may result in those left behind feeling strong emotions of anger, sadness and confusion, perhaps asking questions and never being satisfied with the answers. What helps the grieving to come to terms with their sorrow are the traditions, rituals and cultural norms for dealing with loss that have been established over millennia. During a pandemic, the state of affairs is much more complicated and the grieving process is significantly disrupted, leading to additional challenges for those who are grieving and those who are supporting the grieving. Grief, bereavement and mourning. Knowing the difference can help with how to better cope with your loss. Grief represents the thoughts and feelings experienced following the loss of any kind, be it a job, status, a game, a relationship, house or income. Bereavement is a specific kind of grief related to someone dying and the process that grief follows. Mourning is an outward expression of grief which may vary between cultures and which may evolve over time. Some cultures wear black, some wear white, some withdraw from society and are quiet and respectful. Others celebrate with a drink and a party-like atmosphere to ensure a good send-off. Grief, bereavement and mourning have a psychological effect and are accompanied by many emotions and behaviours, such as numbness, emotional outbursts, fear, bargaining, disorganisation, panic, loneliness, guilt and depression. There may be trouble sleeping or eating, excessive fatigue, muscle weakness or shakiness, nightmares or social withdrawal. The grief process has different stages, including shock, denial, anger, bargaining, sadness and depression, and finally acceptance. Grief is not linear and the bereaved often jump randomly between these different stages. The process is highly individualized and unpredictable and so there's no one-size-fits-all approach. The goal is for this difficult time to eventually be followed by the forming of new relationships, new patterns, new strengths, the experience of hope and a focus on helping others. It is important to observe the loss of a loved one for a couple of reasons. Firstly, to acknowledge a life lived and a life completed. Then to honour and remember the loved ones by sharing memories to initiate the grieving process and also to support one another emotionally and physically. Whether a family chooses to celebrate the life of their loved one with the traditional funeral rites or a contemporary ceremony like a wake or an after tears party, a funeral provides a profound experience that ultimately assists those left behind with the grieving process. Due to the various limitations presented by the COVID-19 pandemic, people may have a more difficult time coping with loss. With social distancing expectations in place, it's more difficult to receive person-to-person -person support. There is more unwanted alone and thinking time, more social health and job uncertainty, and more frequent reminders about illness and death. As there are fewer opportunities to cope with grief, people may experience more severe and inhibiting symptoms over a longer period of time. So how do we cope? I have a few tips. Do your best with, with what your government is allowing you during this time. If you have lockdown orders, arrange an online funeral or celebration. Plan for a memorial service at a later stage. Start a family or friends WhatsApp group to feel more connected. Plan to light a candle at the same time and share the pics with each other. Practice self-compassion and self-nurturing by resting and taking care of yourself enough. Identify what you need during this time and not what you think you have to do. Acknowledge that there is additional stress associated during the pandemic and that much is beyond your control. Agree with others in advance to stay connected at a specific time each day by phone or video call to prevent becoming isolated. 
Balance your day with loss-related activities, like looking at photos, crying, talking about your loved one, and restorative exercises, like making plans for the future, exercising, and enjoying hobbies. Consider minimizing the time you spend watching the news. Keep yourself informed, but don't do anything that will increase your stress levels unnecessarily. Start journaling to better identify and deal with your thoughts and feelings. Seek out support groups, there are many on Facebook, or start one. Read books, attend workshops, or download a mobile app. And lastly, be prepared to take professional help if need be. So to conclude, this is a difficult time, made especially more difficult if you are grieving. So find ways to grieve and mourn that fits in with what you and your family need right now. I know it's not the same, but use technology to get together, to remember your loved one, to share pictures and stories, to laugh and cry together. Establish new traditions, even if temporary, to navigate an era that will go down as memorable for all the wrong reasons. And finally, be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself. I love the saying that Abraham Lincoln made famous, and this too shall pass, because it does. I'm Coach Robin. Thank you for having me on Women's Choice magazine.